This is Mr. Supon with First Take One Cut No Edit Low Pixel Productions. We have the sacraments of Christian initiation. The first one we will be looking at is baptism. The sacraments of initiation are baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. Let's start with the Bible verse from the Torah, from Genesis. In Hebrew, that's but a sheet. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was a formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. That's Genesis 1. Again, there's three types of sacraments, initiation, healing, and service, also called vocation. We call that service of communion. Let's look at a scripture regarding baptism in 1 Corinthians 10, 1 through 4. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our fathers were all under the cloud, and they all passed through the sea, and they all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and they all ate the same spiritual food, and they all drank the same spiritual drink, for they were drinking from a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. That is Paul the Apostle. Paul the Apostle wrote that, and we know that he wrote approximately half of the New Testament. The sacrament of baptism, the first of the seven sacraments, the first of the three sacraments of Christian initiation, that's where we become a, a member of God's family, the church, the ecclesia of the church. We plunge into the waters of death, and we rise to the new life in Christ, so the child is baptized, or the, the adult is baptized, right? So they go down, they die, and we're dying to ourselves. And then when we rise up, we're rising up to Christ and through Christ. Scriptural foundations. Let's look at a New Testament Bible verse, Matthew three, sixteen and 17. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and, and lighting up upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So we know Jesus was baptized in the Jordan River, the same river that the Jewish people crossed to get into the Promised Land. Okay, scriptural foundations. More or less look at these. Baptism was prefigured in the Old Testament long before the birth of Jesus. And there are four prominent stories with strong water images that we can relate directly to the sacrament. We have the creation story, which I read in Genesis 1. We have the great flood, that's Noah's Ark. There were eight, eight people on the Ark. Eight was symbolic of, of uh, the eighth day when Jesus rose from the dead. The waters are symbolic of baptism, and the Ark made out of wood was symbolic of the cross. Here we have the parting of the Red Sea, where... where um, where Moses led the people away from slavery into freedom. And then we have the Jordan River crossing, Joshua and the 12 tribes crossing the Jordan River into the Promised Land, which was symbolic of heaven. The waters of new life. Waters. By God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. That is 2 Peter 3, 5. We see the importance of water. During creation in Genesis 1, the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters and breathed life into them, and we remember this with every baptism. Human beings be, uh, become a new creation in the Trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The, the great flood wipes away sin. Waters can be deadly, we know that. We know the floods at different times and ages. Uh, we know what water can do. God was so disgusted with human sin, so he started over, only saving part of creation. A fresh start for his creation. This is actually a redemption story. Remember, redemption, redemption. That's from redemptio, which means to buy back. Jesus purchased our life with his blood on the cross. And this is the story where God saved the people through the ark and the waters, right? The cross and the baptismal waters. 
From slavery to freedom, the Israelites' passage through the Red Sea. They were led from slavery to freedom, death to new life. We have a great example here of Moses going through, going through the Red Sea. Joshua leads the 12 tribes through the Jordan. Joshua, whose name is Yeshu in Hebrew, is translated as Jesus in English. Joshua was not his, uh, his given name. Moses gave him the name Joshua, which is actually the name Jesus. Then he led the 12 tribes into the promised land. Right? So Joshua leads the 12 tribes into the promised land as Jesus leads 12 apostles into the promised land called heaven. There's actually the Jordan River at its widest, which is 60 feet. At its narrowest, it's quite narrow. And here we go. We have a nice uh, map here. We can see there, uh, uh, Sh uh, Shittim is where they started. They crossed the Jordan here to go into Jericho. They conquered Jericho first. And here's the picture of the ark, which Joshua brought across. All right, 1,400 years later, after this story of Joshua, Jesus would be baptized in the same river that Joshua crossed over. So when the people set out from their tents to cross the Jordan, with the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant before the people, uh, and when those who were carrying the Ark came up to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests carrying the Ark stepped down into the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all of its banks all the days of harvest. Then the waters which were flowing down from above stood and rose up in one heap and a great distance away at Adam. So this was another. This was a city called Adam. That's where they, it looks like they saw this from. So the people crossed opposite Jericho, and the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan, while all Israel crossed on dry ground until all the nation had finished crossing the Jordan. And in the Ark of the Covenant, that was pretty amazing. You had the Ten Commandments. You had the manna that they uh, received from God from heaven. And you had Aaron's staff. Okay, the waters of the Jordan. That's actually the river right there where Jesus was baptized. That's supposed to be the, uh, the site. Here we go. The river Jordan leads us from the Old Testament to the New Testament. To reach the promised land, the Jewish people had to cross the Jordan. John the Baptist baptized Jesus, our Savior, in the Jordan River, just north of Israel. When Jesus was baptized, the heavens opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. The Holy Trinity in Jesus' baptism. After he was baptized, Jesus came up immediately from the water. And behold, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending as a dove and settling on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son, whom I am well pleased. So we can see the Son, which is Bar, which is Bar in, um, in Hebrew, Bar or Ben. We see the Spirit, Ruach, the Spirit of God. And the voice from heaven says, This is my beloved Son. So we see the Son again, uh, the Son again. And then the person saying this would be the Father. The voice from heaven would be the Father. Okay, let's really take a look at Genesis 1, in the beginning. In the beginning, God, Elohim, created, and the word is bara in Hebrew. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was formless and desolate emptiness, and darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So we have God, Elohim. The word for created is bara. And bar means sun. So if you look up this word created, it also refers to the sun, the son of God. And in uh, John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Now, can you think of another time when the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters? And that time would be Jesus when he was baptized. He was moving over the surface. Now, the baptism ritual. By bringing a child into baptism, parents and godparents share their faith with the child, right? So they have godparents. They're sharing their faith with the child. You have two godparents, right? Two godparents. The celebrant may be a deacon, priest, or bishop. Their child's anointing on the chest. That Everyone renews their baptismal promises. The water is poured over the head three times. And the celebrant says, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. 
Here's the necessary symbols, the holy water, the font, which contains the water. You have the candle. Important, it's the Paschal candle. Paschal means uh, Pesach in Hebrew, which is uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus. The Passover lamb in the Old Testament passes over the house, right? The white garment, which is putting on of Christ, the sacred chrism, which would be the oil. Now, special circumstances. Uh, first of all, let's look at the RCIA, my favorite program, the Rite of Christian Initiation for Adults, which uh, they receive in the Easter Vigil. You know that. That's the last uh, day of the Tritium on the liturgical calendar just before Easter, Easter Sunday, right? The, catechu the catechumen, that's the person, the unbaptized person. They receive the three sacraments. Now you have the baptism of desire and baptism of blood. Bla baptism of blood. This has to do with people who they want to follow the Lord. Uh, they actually either die through being martyred or they die without getting baptized. But here it talks about God granting them grace. Love that. Now the six effects of baptism. We have the dying and rising of Christ, and that refers to the, that connects with the Paschal mystery, freedom from original sin, which connects to the sin of Adam and Eve, the children of God, we are adopted into God's family through His grace, His sanctifying grace. We're members of the church, uh, the community of the church. Sacramental, we will here refer to the anointing of the oil. So the sacramental character, we are anointed with the sacred chrism oil. Power by discipleship. To go out and be priests, prophets, and kings. Priests, prophets, and kings. Uh, baptism review. Now, what type of sacrament is baptism? We know it's initiation. What scripture stories prefigure uh, the sacrament of baptism? We know the stories in the Old Testament. There are four of them. And Jesus' baptism actually fulfills all those. There's actually more than four. We're just including four. What is it included in the baptism ritual? Well, you guys, remember, back up on these slides. Here's what it is included right here. Just went over that. And then what are the effects of receiving the sacrament? We have the effects here, right here. Effects, the gifts of baptism. And how might you apply the sacrament to your own life, whether or not you have received it? And then what does the water bring to you? What does the water do for us, the baptismal waters? What do they do for us? How can they change our lives? Thank you, everyone. This is Mr. Supon with First Take One Cut. Know it at Low Pixar Productions.